What is up everyone? My name is Sahil and I am a second year UBC Medical School student and in today's video I will be showing you my entire UBC Medical School application but first let's cue the intro. Alright and welcome back. If this is the first video that you're watching of mine I want to say a big thank you and welcome to our YouTube community. On this channel, I like to make health and fitness videos, medicine related videos, travel vlogs, and other fun videos just like this one. Now, I wanna get started by just talking a little bit about why I even have this YouTube channel. So, as some of you may know, when I first had this dream and goal of getting into medicine, there were very few people that I could actually go to and ask questions to, and even fewer people that actually looked like me uh, that I could resonate with. So with that being said, the, the goal of this whole YouTube channel is to help aspiring pre-meds get into medical school and educate them about the process while also sharing tidbits of my personal life in medical school. So if I could do that for even one of you folks watching these videos, that would mean so much to me and I would consider all the work that goes into this totally worth it. Um, and with that being said, I remember the most frequent question that I used to think about uh, when I would think about getting into UBC Medical School uh, was, hey, what kind of people get in? What kind of things do they do? Are they built from a different material? Are they even human? Like, do they make mistakes? Or are they these perfect human beings? Um, and little did I know. If that's you right now, don't worry, I got you. This video will hopefully help to answer those questions and show you my application and my journey to get into medical school, specifically UBC. Um, before we get into that, some disclaimers that are super, super important that I really want to emphasize. Number one, I am not speaking on behalf of any UBC admissions uh, committee nor any medical school's admission committee. Everything I talk about in this YouTube video and even for this whole YouTube channel, these are all experiences of my own or whoever the guest that I bring on. Point number two, I have a feeling that this video is going to be a little bit longer uh, than my other ones. And I think it's just because there's so much good stuff that I want to pack into this video. So be aware, this video is a bit longer. I will put timestamps into the description box. So if there's a certain segment of my application that you want to take a look at, please feel free to go check out the description box um, and that information will be there. I'm done talking. I'm sure you guys are excited to watch the rest of this video and get to know a bit more about my journey. Um, so with that being said, let's get right into it. All right, folks, so let's go. Uh, the UBC Medical School application can be thought of as a couple different ways. I like to break it down in regards to your academics, your research, your employment, your extracurriculars, and then the awards and accomplishment. And then I'll also go ahead and give some general tips uh, for the application that I wish I had known earlier. Um, so I hope that helps. So first things first, a very important caveat that I want to make sure everyone is aware of is that no one is you and that is your power. When I take you guys through this whole presentation and show you guys my application, I by no means want you guys to think that, hey, I am nowhere near what this guy has done. Truth of the fact is that there are so many people in medical school who have done so many different things. Some are mothers, some are fathers, some are um, ballet dancers, some are Olympians um, or Olympic athletes. Um, so basically what I'm trying to say is that just because I've done something doesn't mean that you also need to do it. But remember that your superpower is that you are you and uh, you're not me and I'm not you. So. Anyways, let's get that clarified and keep going. So first thing we'll talk about is my academics. So I actually went to the University of the Fraser Valley and these are the courses I took. So Biology 111, A+, Chem, A+. Um, I think it's pretty safe to say that for my year one at UFE, um, doing a Bachelor's of Science degree and with the Biology Honors, um, I did relatively well in my first year. Um, and I think it was just that fear of not wanting to fail and not knowing where I stand and like what kind of um, academic difficulty I will face in university as compared to high school. So I kind of gave it my 100% um, while also focusing on my extracurriculars. Um, but yeah, it didn't really stay um, as amazing as I had wished. So I did get a, a minus in e ecology. Um, but quick reminder, 
enter your courses and grades as they appear on your transcript and do not convert them into the UBC percentages or credits. UBC will do all of the work. However, your grades appear on your transcript, just make sure to put that on the UBC application. Year number two, this one is a bit more rough for me. Um, as you'll notice, I started getting a bit lower grades, A minus, got my first B plus. I still remember crying when I saw that. This was in organic chemistry. Um, and I, I won't go too long into the story behind it, but basically I was focusing a lot on my extracurriculars to the point where I wasn't even thinking about academics. I think I had like a really huge event um, the day of my organic chemistry exam. And the only thing on my mind was the event that I was organizing. and. That event is still talked about at UFE as one of the largest ones yet. We had about 400, 500 people uh, show up. So I don't know, you win some, you lose some. Next semester, I did give it my all for chemistry. Um, fortunately, still found it difficult for math and physics. But once again, a few bad grades is not the end of it. There is still hope for you. So if that's you right now, don't lose hope. Um, I got pretty bad grades at the beginning and you can make up for it. You'll get into med school. <laughs> Year three, so this one, I really started to focus down on my academics, gave it my all, started to decrease uh, the different types of extracurriculars I was a part of, and that really helped. It's really just finding that sweet spot, that balance. Um, so that's what happened here. And then in year four, that's when I realized I wanted to do a biology honors. So for the biology honors, there were a few other classes I had to take. Apologies that the names are not here, but uh, I'm sure you could find that if you go on the UFE website and just search up these course codes, um, I just took it from my transcript and moved it over here. I think it's pretty safe to say I gave it my 100% for year three, year four, and I graduated with a 4.09 uh, GPA. And at UFE, that's out of 4.33. So just take that how, is you, how you will. So a quick note about the GPA. I do want to mention that I took this from UBC's website and the URL is even here. So you can type that in and it'll take you to UBC's website. That's actually where I got most of my information, from, all of my information from. Um, but the evaluation criteria, so there is a overall academic GPA, which is how, whatever marks you got that's on your transcript and all of your transcripts at whichever universities you've attended. Then there's also the adjusted academic average AGPA. So that means they're gonna drop some of the lowest credits that you've received. Um, and I think that really helps. So the way I think of this is a weighted GPA. And I think that's actually what it's referred to as um, at the University of Toronto. Um, but don't quote me on that. But basically, I do want to give you guys that uh, a reminder that if you did get a couple bad grades like I did, UBC is very understanding of that. They know that no one's perfect. There are bad moments. Um, and there's uh, situations where you just can't prioritize studying. Uh, next, I'll talk about non-academic activities. So I literally got this from the UBC Help Guide. This is literally your best friend. I can't harp this enough. But the UBC Health Guide is a document that is released by the UBC Med um, Admissions Committee or by the Med uh, Faculty. And it literally tells you what kind of things they're looking for, what kind of things they're not looking for. So we'll talk a little bit more about that. You might be wondering what they all mean, but UBC actually does a really good job of explaining that in the Help Guide. Another thing is for the employment. So I'll start off by going into my application um, from employment. So I won't go into everything, but these are most of the key points. Um, just because I don't want this video to be super long. Uh, so for employment, I was a research assistant for one semester. I was a UFE SLG leader for two years and then a GNC sales associate. Uh, if you didn't already guess it, I know you can't really see the muscles, but yeah. Um, I also screenshotted this segment right here. So UBC says that discrepancies between the detail in your application and those confirmed by the verifier are noted and may have a serious negative impact on your application. So I say, why even leave anything up to chance? If you are working on the UBC med application and you've written up a description, whether it's the start and end dates, the hours per week, uh, whether you receive course credit or not, the description, send that, all of that to your verifier who's gonna be receiving it from UBC regardless and see if they agree with what you've written down in regards to your description. And if not, that is great because now you have time to fix it so that before you submit your application and before UBC contacts them and they say, that, hey, this isn't what happened, you actually took a proactive approach uh, to fix that and prevent any problems. So yeah, a, a tip that I pass on to every applicant. 
Okay, this is like the meat of the application. So my non-academic activities, um, there is a couple different things I've done. Um, so I was the UFB Circle K Club president. Basically, the Circle K Club is part of the Kiwanis family. Um, Kiwanis International is a organization almost like Rotary. And personally, I was really passionate about the Kiwanis family and I noticed that there wasn't a club at UFB, but there was one present at all these other different universities. So it was an amazing experience starting that up with my sister. I think I've actually talked a bit more about it in one of my videos so I'll make sure to link that here. Another thing I've also done is Bhangra. Uh, Bhangra is a traditional Indian folk dance and I have been very privileged and blessed to be able to learn that uh, dance form. And I think I've been doing that since I was a little kid. Uh, I want to say I started in 2012. Um, another thing is coordinator of Operation Christmas Child Project, which is basically like setting up these Christmas gifts uh, for families who don't have access to things like this. And the gifts don't have to be these crazy luxurious items. It can be something simple like crayons, um, non-perishable food items, and things like this really go a long way to those who need these items in third, third world countries. So that's something I was very passionate about. Uh, ARH volunteer team leader. So I was volunteering at the regional hospital. Again, great experience. Uh, exercise and movie night leader at the Menno home, which is basically like a senior home uh, in my local community. And I had an amazing time. One funny situation that I remember to this day is when I was told that, hey, you're gonna be leading the exercises. And I was like, oh, I am ready, let's do this. And I thought we were gonna do some pretty like exciting things. And I was just shadowing uh, the coordinator at that time. So I thought I would at least break into a sweat or something. And I show up there and I'm sitting in a circle with the seniors and I realize that we're not gonna go for a run. We're not gonna go for a walk, nothing like that. We were doing simple movements, um, it's closing our, our hands, opening them, moving our hands up and down. And I realized how amazing exercise is. Literally everyone and anyone can do it, regardless of your age, your gender, your race, where you are in the world, what resources you have, how many limbs you have, uh, exercise is universal. The, the type of exercise, the frequency, the intensity might change, but exercise is universal to a human being. And I think I really loved that whole experience. And movie nights was the best. I swear the, the best movies were made in the 60s and the 70s um, and even better ones when it was black and white. And I really enjoyed watching those movies with the seniors at that time. Um, I also was the theatrical production stage and sound manager at the Aga Khan World Partnership Walk, uh, which is a great experience. Um, and I've often thought of myself as more of an actor um, and a performer in front of the camera, but this is the first time that I was behind the camera and trying to just manage all of the, the teams that were coming to perform and all the performers. Um, and that was quite uh, an experience, a very busy one, if I might say so myself. Uh, what else? We've done Christmas caroling and Karate BC Championships. So it sounds much cooler than it actually is. I We were, I think in grade 12 at that time. And uh, I've been doing karate since I was in grade, grade four. All these things my mom and my dad put me in that I didn't really enjoy at the beginning, but I am so grateful for now. Karate has had such an amazing experience for me. So I was fortunate enough to be selected to represent BC at the BC Championships. Uh, so that was an amazing experience as well. Now, I know what some of you might be wondering. You've talked about these experiences and all these things you've done, but what did you actually write in the description? So these are my tips. One, be objective. Don't be subjective. Don't tell them how you're like a doctor, um, what you've learned, when you displayed sympathy and compassion and how you're a great leader. They don't want to hear that. At least UBC doesn't want to hear that. Number two, start early. Number three, spell check. That's so important. You don't want something simple like that um, to be a mistake um, that a med school admissions committee officer picks out on your application and puts you in a negative light. No way. And number four, I kind of alluded to this, but the descriptions are different for each medical school. So make sure you do check. For example, I know that University of Toronto um, actually wants you to be very subjective in your approach of writing the description. They want you to touch on the CANMEDs and tell them how are you a good uh, collaborator, a good communicator, leader, uh, etc. But at UBC, from my understanding and from the help guide, which I've cited here, this is from the UBC help guide 2020, 2021. Um, and as you can see, it explicitly says in red and they've actually bolded some segments, they've underlined some segments. So we're just gonna read through it just to emphasize. We do not want to know how you're like a doctor and we encourage you not to think about your application in such a limited way. 
Uh, I'm sure you can read this on your own. So because this is such an important part of the uh, application, I actually thought we would do some examples together. And uh, let's start off with an example of a varsity athlete. So this is um, a bad one first. So I made this up. I was a varsity athlete for the University of the Fraser Valley. Over the last five years, I've improved my communication and collaboration abilities by working with my team on and off the field. I mean, it's a good description. It tells you that you're touching on the can meds, but like UBC emphasized in the help guide, that's not what they want to know. And here is a much better one. I was a goalkeeper on my university's women's varsity soccer team for four years. We played in the University Athlete Association Canada West League. In 2011, we won silver in the CIS championships. I played X games per season, training include X, Y, Z, and the team had 26 meetings. Do you guys get how different and drastically different those two uh, descriptions are? So in one, I'm just being very willy wonky, very subjective, and the other, I'm being very objective and going into so much detail about uh, the specific things they did. Now you might be thinking like, Sahil, are you sure this is a good description? Like, do we take your word for it? And I say, don't take my word for it instead take UBC's word for it. So this is actually from the help guide, again, 2020 to 2021 one. Um, uh, and the reason I emphasize it is that because UBC releases a new help guide almost every year uh, and they update things. So we'll talk a bit more about that. Uh, but this, for example, would be a diversity of experience that UBC has listed it as. This is their description. They've used a majority of the characters um, and they have a box for you, where you can talk about the organization's name. So you don't want to waste time and waste character, sorry, um, mentioning the university's name in the description. What else? Verify your information goes here. And this is my favorite spot. You can talk about your hours, the frequency, all those things in here. Um, so do make use of that. I hope that helps. Um, next. So next was the award section of the application. And in my year, there were five maximum. And I think this year is also five maximum, but uh, these are the ones I've included. So University of the Fraser Valley Student Union Society, Premier Entrance Scholarship. Um, I got that when I was going from high school to university. It meant a lot to me. It's actually one of my uh, most, it was one of the most prestigious uh, scholarships that UFB offered at that time. So I thought it was important to include that, which I did. Um, next, I included my uh, volunteer of the year award that I received at the university and also just to keep change things up um, and show my fitness I included um, my Mr. World Canada top fitness award that I received very proud of that as well I was one of the youngest contenders at that time I was 18 years old and I think that was the minimum uh, to be part of Mr. World Canada's pageant um, and I have to say a very cool experience I met guys from across Canada um, I think the oldest one was 26, 28, and my good friend Jinder won that competition, and he has been continuing uh, to be a great inspiration for me. So overall, I consider that uh, whole experience a very good success. Uh, next, I included uh, another scholarship that I received, and then uh, my UFE Dean's List. Over here, I just took the segment out from the help guide. Next, let's talk about research. So. My research experience included uh, a poster presentation. So like you guys know, I have a biology uh, honors degree and also a chemistry minor. So by the latter half of my degree, I started finding chemistry pretty interesting um, and hence um, the poster presentation in chemistry as well. But uh, yeah, I didn't have any publications at that time. I also want to give a big reminder that your research does not have to be cutting edge. I remember that was the biggest mistake that I used to think of. Um, during the time of picking a research project. I thought I had to pick something very medicine related, but more than what you're studying or what kind of research you're doing, I think admissions committees and anyone for that matter is more interested in not the, the research question, but the research process. So by doing research, the whole process of collaborating with the team, coming up with a hypothesis, working with your supervisor to meet deadlines, um, I think that is much more valuable than hey, this guy studied stem cells. I mean, that's pretty cool. I find them pretty cool. But I really think that the whole research process is super educational and really helpful just for your own personal growth. Um, some final remarks regarding research. I do want to emphasize that if you can get any research on your application, that is great. It's better than no research. Publications are greater uh, than poster presentations. 
That being said, I didn't have publications, so I included my poster presentations on there. And as long as you explicitly state that this wasn't a publication, I think they're very understanding of that. Um, very few people do I know who actually had publications at that time, and that is very impressive. These days I'm seeing high school students having publications, so I don't know what you guys are doing. This segment right here is from the health guide. They explicitly state, once again, um, only if you are first or second author to include the research on there, no third authors. Um, and if you're not sure which author you are, biggest tip, go talk to your research um, supervisor. He's the one or, or she's the one who's going to be the verifier. So you want to make sure that they are in a grill of uh, which authorship you have. Cutoff date of June 1st. Yep. Grade 11 onwards. Pretty similar and consistent thus far. Uh, next, uh, we'll talk about the references and MCAT. So references are not actually required um, for the submission of the UBC Medical School application. Um, they're required after you've been uh, invited for an interview. So don't stress about that yet. I mean, yes, obviously keep in mind and have an idea of who you might ask for a letter of reference, but you don't need that at the moment. Uh, number two, your MCAT. So you do have some extra time to submit your MCAT and get the score in. Um, and I've made a full video on how to study for the MCAT. So please do make sure to check that out if that's something you're a little stressed about or if you have your MCAT coming up. Um, and if I can be of any help for that, that would be amazing. And I just wanted to talk a little bit about the importance of starting early. They require you to send in a couple different things. I don't remember all of them, but transcripts is one of them. Um, and there's a couple of different other things you have to upload through the portal. But this is just a reminder to make sure to start early and uh, just keep checking the portal and keep checking to make sure that, hey, it has been received by them. If you start early, that means they'll accept it early. That means they'll have time before they get super busy to verify on the portal that, yes, it's been accepted and it has been received. Whereas much later on in the process, they might not have the luxury to be able to do that. And I think they often um, do send out a email that, hey, we won't be updating them as they come in just because of the numbers that they're receiving. So be on the safe side, submit your transcripts early and Stay, stay stressless or stay less stressed. Yeah. Uh, next, this is my two cent technique. I try to come up with like a cool name for it. I couldn't think of anything. And then I realized who am I to be naming a technique? Um, so these are my two cents. If you like it, great. If you don't like it, that's totally okay. Just move on to the next segment. But if you're working on your UBC Med School application, um, this is how I would recommend to break down um, the, the submission of it. So number one, execute. This is everything you're doing leading up to even thinking about applying to medical school. So for example, everything you do grade 11 onwards, um, just do everything that you're genuinely passionate about. I've talked about this on multiple occasions, but when you are passionate about something and you follow that wholeheartedly, that is going to translate into something that is amazing and exceptional. And that growth um, that you achieved because you were so passionate in that task is going to reflect well on your application compared to someone who did certain things just because um, that's a typical pre-med thing to do. So step number two is a brainstorm. Now by brainstorm, I mean start looking through the UBC Health Guide and start reflecting on your own experiences that you can actually put down on your UBC med school application. Um, and if you notice that there's things that, hey, I don't have enough capacity to work with other items or enough diversity of experiences, you have the luxury of time because you started early and hence you're watching this video as well. So now you can go back and execute on those things. If you've noticed, you've only been working um, with a senior population and you're very passionate about working with kids, but you never had that experience. Why not go and volunteer at a daycare or after school program or something like that? So execute, then reflect on what you've done and how that reflect uh, how that will translate on your application and go back and execute different things that, that will also reflect well on your application. Point number three is drafting. Now you may have noticed that this theme of starting early has come up a couple different times, but I really recommend starting to draft up your application early on in the process. And by early, I don't mean a month early, two months early. I mean, even like a, a year early. I remember I started looking at the UBC med school application, uh, I think in my first year of undergrad and I started thinking like, hey, what does this mean diversity of experiences? Well, I'm just going to focus on the things I enjoy. And then in three months, in six months, in nine months, 
I'm going to look back and see like, hey, what experiences fit on this application? Okay, well, this did. Well, this area is really weak. Let's say research. That means I need to focus on that. So that's the way I started thinking about it. I even started writing my descriptions a little bit earlier. I know you haven't done much of the stuff at that time, but don't panic. Just starting and executing is huge. So make sure to do that. And I hope this technique is helping thus far. Um, next up is polish and revise. Get someone who is not even in medicine, like your sister, your mom, your parents. It will go a long way. The last thing you want for your UBC med application is to have bad grammar, bad spelling uh, and spelling mistakes uh, and small things like that, that you could have fixed. You want this application to be the best representation of yourself. And now some general tips that I do want to pass on is use the current UBC help guide and the documentation checklist. UBC is an amazing medical school to apply to and one of the reasons I really love them and I'm sure other medical schools do this as well, they actually release a help guide and a documentation checklist. It outlines all the documents you need to submit um, and when the deadlines are and it just keeps you on top um, of the deadlines. So print that list out and whenever you send something and just check mark it for your reference so you know that hey i did submit my transcripts this day they haven't received it let's say two weeks maybe a month later that means i should submit another one or at least give a follow-up email follow-up call just to see what the what's happening uh point number two how soon is too soon so like i mentioned earlier i'm a big believer of starting early in my opinion it's never too early so yeah that's me maybe that's just like a type of personality kind of thing tip number three make sure to contact all of your verifiers before the application submission like i've talked about earlier the last thing you want is for one of your verifiers to be like hey this is not true i don't know why this person wrote he's a first author he actually only helped us with data collection i don't know things like that happen so keep that in mind point number four make it your own the whole point of this video is not to intimidate you i want you guys to feel inspired if anything to be like hey he did all these things and followed his passions and was able to get into medical school. That must be a mean and that must be a sign that if I also follow my passions and keep hustling and keep being kind, that I also can get into medical school, which is 100% true. I believe in you, you can do this fam. So please, please, please make your application your own. Don't try to copy anyone. Don't try to be anyone. You are the best version of yourself and that is your best power. No one can be you. And I think that is a beautiful idea. So keep that in mind. And lastly, the UBC application template. So this is actually a document that I'm very, very proud of. It's something that I created by myself where you can basically look at the different sections of the application and see um, what fits in where. So once you write down what uh, the title is and, and the description, it'll automatically count how many characters you used up. And if later on in your application, when you're revising it, you notice that, hey, this experience doesn't actually fit well in diversity of experience. I wanna move that down to capacity to work with others. You can totally do that. That's actually one of the main reasons I love that because you have a bird's eye view of all the things you've worked on and you can easily reorder them and put them in different sections. And I found it really helpful and I hope you guys will find it helpful as well. And the link is in the description. It is completely free. Feel free to share with your friends. And if you have tips on how I can make it better, please do comment them below. I would appreciate that. Um, once again, the whole purpose of this is to help you guys. And last thing before we get going is you got this. One final word of motivation because I feel like you can never have too much motivation. Motivation is this beautiful thing and it's like holding sand. You try to get as much of it as you can at any given point and then it slowly falls out of your hand. Ooh, that's beautiful. I don't think anyone said that before. The idea just came to me, but um, keep yourself motivated. And how do you do that? I have a amazing, if I may say so myself, uh, YouTube video on that topic coming up soon. And if you want to know when it comes out, feel free to smash that like button and the subscribe button to stay informed um, and receive updates. Uh, I don't think you get updates unless you hit the bell icon, um, but feel free to do that as well. And I really hope that you guys enjoyed today's video and found it of tons and tons of value. It honestly makes me so happy seeing your guys' messages, seeing your guys' comments, your likes, that's super exciting. Anyways guys, please do make sure to share this video with all of your friends it would mean so much to me and until next time i wish you guys tons of peace like i genuinely wish you tons of peace 
and tons of love. I hope you find your loved one. I hope you find your girlfriend, your boyfriend to be, your husband, your fiance, whoever they might be. Maybe they're in medical school. Maybe that's why you're watching this video. Um, and tons of games. So yeah, tons of peace, love, and gains for you. Coming back around like lasso, macro, macro, like a vision board. I see with clarity. I hustle like my name was Gary V. For more than the wealth of prosperity. Accountants was talking about equity. I'm triple H giving the pedigree. And being that I'm special, my specialty. I'm putting the work till I'm dirt in the earth. I'm moving furniture to Beverly.